Good morning and welcome to the Eucharist at Lancaster Priory on the third Sunday after Trinity. My name is Leah Vasey Saunders and today's worship involves members of Lancaster Priory's congregations, local community group East Meets West and staff and pupils from Ripley St Thomas Church of England Academy. Lancaster Priory is hosting a 26 day festival of the earth of which the centerpiece is Luke Jaram's world-renowned installation, Gaia. We have been thinking about how we create opportunities as people visit our church and experience the awe and wonder of this art to enable them to see and experience something of the work of God in our world and through the work of God's church. Our readings today are about people who find themselves rejoicing at what God is doing in their midst. So as we worship together this Sunday, we pray for God to open our eyes and fill our hearts with joy at the work he is doing in and through us and in all creation. Jesus Christ is King of it. He lives his life in us for the sake of the world. Jesus is alive today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We confess our sin, and the sins of our society, in the misuse of God's creation.
God our Father, we are sorry for the times when we have used your gifts carelessly and acted ungratefully. Hear our prayer and in your mercy forgive us and help us. We enjoy the fruits of the harvest but sometimes forget that you have given them to us. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We belong to a people who are full and satisfied, but ignore the cry of the hungry. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We are thoughtless and do not care enough for the world that you have made. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. We store up goods for ourselves alone, as if there were no God and no heaven. Father, in your mercy, forgive us and help us. Almighty God, who in Jesus Christ has given us a kingdom that cannot be destroyed, forgive you your sins, open your eyes to God's truth, and strengthen you to do God's will, and give you the joy of his kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God, our Saviour, look on this wounded world in pity and in power. Hold us fast to your promises of peace won for us by your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Rejoice with Jerusalem. And be glad for her, all you who love her. Rejoice with her in joy, all you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breasts, that you may drink deeply with delight from her glorious bosom. For thus says the Lord, 
I will extend prosperity to her like a river and the wealth of nations like an overflowing stream. And you shall nurse and be carried on her arm and dandled on her knees. As a mother comforts a child, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. Your bodies shall flourish like the grass. And it shall be known that the hand of the Lord is with his servants and his indignation against his enemies. For the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. After this, the Lord appointed seventy others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, The harvest is plentiful but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. 
but if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the labourer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. And whoever rejects you, rejects me. And whoever rejects me, rejects the one who sent me. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watch Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, who is creator, sustainer, and redeemer. Amen. Have you ever had a moment of just feeling overwhelmed by how, how amazing something is? A feeling of pure joy at something that has happened or you've seen. At Lancaster Priory, we are hosting Luke Duran's Gaia. This amazing art installation that encourages you to just marvel at creation, the whole world suspended from our ceiling. I wonder how many visitors like me have found themselves rejoicing at the work of God. When we talk about creation as the work of God, we are aware not just of the picture in Genesis of God speaking things into being, but we are also reminding ourselves that God is not at arm's length from the world, but is actively and intimately involved in it. God is the one who sees and loves every intricate detail, so that when we see and rejoice, we are only rediscovering a beauty that he has long treasured. The two readings we have today both speak about people who find themselves rejoicing at what God is doing. The prophecy of Isaiah is addressed to the Jewish people after their invasion by Babylon and the destruction of the city of Jerusalem. They felt abandoned by God and uncertain of their future. The words of the prophecy come to them as a promise to a people who were scattered and looked down on unsure that their God remembered them or cared what happened to them. The story of the 70 disciples in Luke is a story of people who had been following Jesus around, 
but who weren't the 12 apostles. They weren't Jesus' closest friends. Some of them probably didn't think that Jesus had really noticed or knew who they were. It's easy to get lost in a crowd of 70. And suddenly Jesus pulls them out and sends them away in pairs to do mission work, heal the sick, preach the good news. I'm not sure they would all have felt very well prepared. It must have felt very exposing. Perhaps some of them quietly decided that if it didn't work out, they might head back home and give up on this discipling stuff instead of coming back and admitting to everyone that they weren't up to the job. But they went and they preached and they healed and they came back rejoicing. These are both readings about joy, the joy of finding God doing amazing things right in front of you. Whether those are the huge nation-changing events being described in Isaiah, or the conversations and moments of healing and salvation on the streets and in the houses of nameless Middle Eastern villages described by Luke. Have you ever had that experience of stealing yourself for the worse, prepared for everything you had ever feared to come true, only to be surprised by welcoming smiles, open the doors and changed lives. Surprised to discover that you are just a small part of a bigger story that God started long ago. You find yourself grinning with relief. Maybe you even start to giggle and you can't stop talking about what happened. I think that's where we're supposed to imagine the disciples being as they come back to Jesus rejoicing. They're stumbling over their words, trying to share all the amazing things that had happened and grinning from ear to ear. It's a similar image to the one in Isaiah. The people who had been scattered, fearful, abandoned, will be overtaken with the joy of God at work. Instead of being a city to be mourned over, Jerusalem will be a city to be rejoiced in like a woman who has finally had a long-awaited child after years of thinking it could never happen, or, says the prophet, changing the image in a way that probably startled its original hearers as much as it startles us, like a child who thought their parent had abandoned them, finding themselves in the arms of God, their mother. Jesus speaks into that experience of joy, the experience of discovering that God is at work. He shares the joy and the excitement of the disciples. They were surprised by God and did amazing things, but he wants them to keep it in perspective. Amazing things happen because God was at work. You are part of this story, but the story is God's, not yours. When I look at Gaia, 1.8 million times smaller than the Earth, it puts my feeble efforts in mission and ministry into perspective. If I experience joy in what God does here in and through this church in Lancaster, how much more rejoicing is there to be in the work of God in this world? So when we are daunted and fearful of the task of being disciples, feel that we are being sent out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Remember that this is not our story, but God's. And that beyond our fears, this is an opportunity to rejoice in the work of God. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from high. We believe in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Creator God, 
You call us to love and serve you with body, mind and spirit through caring for your creation and our sisters and brothers. Open our hearts in compassion and receive these petitions on behalf of the needs of the church and the world. Lord of the universe, we give thanks that you call us to love and worship you as a part of your body, the church. We pray for all Christian people serving you in their daily lives. Give us wisdom to see you at work in our homes, schools, workplaces, communities and the wider world. Enable us to tell the story of Jesus in ways which can be understood in the many places you call and send us to live and work. Fill us with your spirit and give us confidence to participate in your mission here on earth. Creator God, hear our prayer. Sustainer of the world, we cry out to you for our failure to care for this planet and its peoples. We lament the injustice we cause through our inability to see the bigger picture. Give us kindness and compassion in our hearts that we might learn to love you as you love. We pray for those who hold power and authority that they might make decisions that bring peace and justice. We remember those who are most vulnerable at this time, especially the people of Ukraine. Renew amongst them an awareness of your comfort, care and protection. Creator God, hear our prayer. Maker of all things, we give you thanks that you love your children and know all of our needs. We pray for those who suffer and struggle in any way today. We remember those worrying about the cost of food and fuel, those who have been caught up in the earthquake in Afghanistan, and those who are unwell in their own communities and families. Pour out your love, all people in need this day, and bring your healing and peace. Creator God, hear our prayer. God of creation, we give you thanks for the life of our world and its promised restoration. Hear us as we remember those who have died. May we and all who mourn trust in your love for all that you have made. Increase our faith that we might grasp the height, breadth and depth of your eternal plans for us. Creator God, hear our prayer. In a moment's silence, we bring before God our own personal prayers and petitions. Rejoicing in the fellowship of St. Thomas, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and all your saints, we commend ourselves and the whole creation to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. To crown all things, there must be love, to bind all together and complete the whole. Let the peace of Christ rule in our hearts. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace.
blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. From the beginning, you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time, you made us in your image the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven, we may find a voice to sing your praise. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embraced a people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. 
Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Thomas and all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom and in whom, With all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing Blessing and and honour and glory and and power be yours yours for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Joining with our brothers and sisters throughout the world, we pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. As the grain once scattered in the fields and the grapes once dispersed on the hillside are now reunited on this table in bread and wine, so, Lord, may your whole church soon be gathered together from the corners of the earth into your kingdom.
we pray together. Lord of all creation, as we have received the bread and wine, fruits of the earth and tokens of salvation, so with joy we celebrate your goodness and commit ourselves to serve you on your earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. May God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all goodness and growth, pour his blessing upon all things created and upon you, his children, that you may use his gifts to his glory and the welfare of all peoples. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Jesus said to the disciples, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. Thanks be to God. <laughs> 